made it to Riverton wasn't a very long trip at all so we are parked at the Carrier's Arms Hotel which is right in the main street of Riverton and um, it's free for NZMCA members you can see our park behind me there and we will frequent the bar tomorrow night or lunchtime or both anywho Great, we're about to go and wander around and see what there is in Riverton. We've been here many times. Every time we come and visit um, Scott's family, we always come over to Riverton. It's a lovely, sleepy seaside town, but man, is it growing. It's really, really um, going ahead. just uh, by Riverton and in the background you can see Stewart Island and that's Fovo Strait which is a notoriously rough stretch of water and it can get uh, pretty rough through that strait there and then round to Centre Island and if you swallow this follow the sweeping coastline it will take you over to Cobb Bay here in front of you and in the opposite direction on the lookout we have the Riverton Township and it's actually one of the oldest permanently settled areas in New Zealand because uh, pre-European settlers the Ma a lot of Maoris used to settle here because they have an, had an abundance of food source once the early settlers came, they used this as flax milling and whaling and sealing, saw milling and gold mining. So it's always been quite a busy little township. Now it remains quite a popular seaside resort. Just driven a short distance from Riverton towards Colic Bay, and um, on the way we've pulled into the long, hilly, round hill walking track, um, where apparently we're going to see some relics and learn about the history, about the the gold mining era in in, in this um, region, and follow an old tramline way. So let's go and see what it's all about. So gold was actually discovered here by the Italians, but it was actually the Chinese miners that came in to, to mine the gold under uh, quite tough conditions. And it was the southernest, most southernest Chinese gold mining camp in the world. So about 500 Chinese lived here, just a kilometre north of where this track starts. And it was called the Canton Camp. It was also known as the largest Chinese settlement ever in New Zealand at oh. the time. Did you hear that? Scotty just said it was also known as the largest Chinese settlement in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. So we've reached the first tram line in cutting. Oh, Scotty's just getting it right for the photo. <laughs> He's removing the debris. <laughs> so McCallum's tram line cutting and we're going to go to Port's water race via the tram line cutting. We've probably been walking about 10 minutes, is it? Yeah, oh, 15, 15, 20 minutes.
we're near the top of the track and the sign says one hour back to the car park we've been going 35 minutes that's with photo stops so 35 minutes from the car park to this point with photo stops just to put it into perspective we're back at the car where it says 2 hours 15 1 hour 15 you always feel like a champion when you've done it quicker than what the sign says and if you take longer you feel like a failure so we carved one hour off and that's with, with lots of photo stops and reading all the sign boards and history boards so thumbs up to the stout trust who's put this track in by the looks of it and um, well the T Arrowhouse Southland Trust one of the two great job with all the history boards and photos those are the types of tracks we like to do just find out so much about the area and what went on the history love it Spend my youth dropping coins in a wishing well In hopes one day that I would find a story to tell I wear regrets of so this empty life Burden that keeps me awake at night. We bless the sun, cause it gave light to our days. So, thanks very much, Riverton, for having us for our two night stay. Thanks to the Carriers Arms Hotel for our, our base camp. And uh, we enjoyed our stay. As usual, small town New Zealand. Got so much to offer. And uh, next stop, in the cargo. Such fragile old sun, destined to break.